Okay, Straw Hat Sam here. This is the frame build video for Le Puffin. And uh, I'm gonna walk through all the steps it takes to put this little guy together. And here I have it with uh, rims only, but you can purchase ducks as well if you're into that kind of thing. Alrighty, here are the parts laid out before you. Uh, the usual tools are necessary, two and a half millimeter and uh, two millimeter hex drives. Start with the torsion brace. So in order to do this, let's first open up our baggie of miscellaneous screws. And we're going to be using these 35 millimeter M3 button head screws for the flight stack. And they also go through the torsion brace. Also get some blue Loctite thread locker. What we're going to do is uh, insert the 35 millimeter screw through the top end of the sandwich plate. Remember on the puff end, the sandwich plate is actually on the top of the drone and then you run it through the torsion brace and then we can run it through the top plate. Uh, at this point the orientation doesn't matter but as long as you get it so that the torsion brace is located properly. So I put it in the wrong hole as you can see. Uh, let me try that again. There we go, that looks better. Looking closer, make sure the chamfers for the sandwich plate and the top plate are facing outward. Okay, now that we have our first uh, 35 millimeter screw through there, let's put on an M3 hex nut. And at this point, you should uh, start loctiting things. Even though we're not tightening things at this point, um, you should just place a little dab, a dabby dab. Okay, and then Thread that down just so it's just barely hand tight. In fact, it may benefit from being a little bit loose. And then re repeat that step for uh, the remaining four, uh, the remaining three uh, flight stack locations. Okay, I got my flight stack screws installed. Um, torsion brace should be in the middle, and also the press nuts on the top plate should be facing on the same side as these screws. You can now set this main body aside and let's get to work on preparing the arms. On two of these arms, we want to uh, cut out and install a little uh, strip of silicone um, rubber sheet. It has adhesive on one side, so we gotta do that now. Okay, you can guesstimate how much you need. I'm just gonna eyeball it and get enough for one arm each and then uh, Peel the backing off. Try not to peel the adhesive off. If you do peel the adhesive off, just make sure it's stuck back on there. And let's do the other one. And with both arms, just make sure to press down on a flat, even surface. Make sure the adhesive is stuck firmly to both sides. And then you can go in with a pair of scissors or something. Um, an X-Acto knife could work. I found scissors to be the easiest though. Just make sure you don't damage your scissors by cutting too closely to the carbon. Yeah, well, it should look like that. Looks pretty neat. Okay, repeat that for the other arm. Okay, so you only need to apply silicone to two of the arms. Now, worth noting, all four arms are exactly the same part, which makes it convenient if you need to replace an arm. Um, Okay, next let's install these things. Keeping in mind that this is the top of the puffin, I'm gonna use a uh, 14 millimeter M3 button head screw and insert one of my arms like that. So let's place that in there. And we're gonna do these outer screws first. So make sure you align that full well and press it all the way through to the other side. Reach on through to the other side. Okay. I guess that hole was a little tight, but that's okay. And then you can apply some thread locker. And, oops, an M3 hex nut. And you can do hand tighten for now. Just make sure that the arm is oriented correctly with the flat silicone facing vertically and let's install another arm but this one does not have silicone so repeat that same process all 
Okay, so we have the arms loosely installed. We have not installed the inner screws yet. That's what these guys are here for. So prep two of these M3 12 millimeter socket head screws with uh, a bit of Loctite in advance to make this a little bit easier. These are socket heads, so that means the larger driver head. And then what you want to do is just align the arms as symmetrically as possible such that the silicone gets squeezed nice and evenly. And then what you want to do is, keeping the arms nice and symmetrical, place it onto a flat, sturdy surface, and then insert your two M12 or M3 by 12 millimeter socket screws. Make sure there's Loctite on these. And then uh, you'll notice that they won't be going in all the way. And that the reason why is we need to press down on the frame in order to use leverage to mash these two arms together. So you might need to get a screwdriver to help you out a little bit, and just, just to get those started. But it takes quite a bit of uh, force, but don't like cut your hand or anything. But it's necessary because it squeezes the silicone really tightly. And just do a little bit at a time. Just pause at each stage. Don't screw in one screw until completion quite yet, until they're both at the same stage. And then you can tighten down the rest of the way. Make sure to keep that pressure all throughout the, this process. Okay, and we can do that final stage of tightening. Make sure it's good and tight. That's why I use socket head um, screws because it's going to take a lot of torque and so you don't want to strip the head. Okay. You can see now how the silicone has been squeezed out, just absolutely smashed by the arms. This is good. This is a good thing. Now I'll repeat this whole operation for the other two arms. Yay! We got both sets of arms connected together. And uh, we haven't tightened these down yet, so before we install these 35 millimeter standoffs, since we have extra room, let's use this opportunity to tighten down these hex nuts. I'm gonna use a uh, little cute, tiny little crescent wrench here. And going in from the back side with the two millimeter driver, I'm just gonna keep the screw right there, hold the nut with the crescent wrench, and I'm gonna tighten with the driver first. And I actually wanna reposition the crescent so I have some room for turning later. And then once the screw is in all the way, then I can turn the hex nut with the crescent wrench to add that extra little bit of tightness. And uh, of course, don't go too hard on these because it's only M3 screws. They're not that, not that strong, especially in the stainless steel variety. They strip easier with stainless. Okay, and then do that. And voila, there we go, our flight stack screws. All right, the next step is to do the camera mounts. So the sandwich plate is on the top and these 20 millimeter button head screws are gonna come up through the bottom here. And this is gonna be the axles on which the um, vibration gummies are going to sit on. So push a 20 millimeter screw up through there, apply some Loctite, and we're gonna use a uh, M3 hex nut to Hold that in place. Okay, so install one of these for each of the four corners and then tighten them. Okay, our camera mounts are all nice and tightened. And you'll have these nylon nuts. These are for the uh, flight controller stack, so make sure to hold on to these. Okay, um, next up we can break out our 35 millimeter standoff. So here's how I like to do this. I get an six millimeter button head screw, apply some Loctite, and we're gonna put all these standoffs or install them all onto the uh, top plate, through the top plate. 
and notice there I uh, use this clearance hole and um, yeah just install all eight of these 35 millimeter standoffs to the top plate don't tighten them yet though okay these mamma jammas are installed but they're not tightened yet I'm going to show you how I do that uh, I take a screw from the bottom or a driver from the bottom and I grip it with uh, these wire strippers because they have a little curvy section like a rounded section that's great for gripping the standoff and then I just clamp down hard and then turn with the driver and call it good so it doesn't mark the standoff too bad there's a little tiny dot but it's good enough for me so I repeat that for the remaining eight standoffs okay these are all tightened down um, next let's do the 20 millimeter standoffs which are necessary to mount these uh, Rimi, Rimi guys Okay, using a similar process as the 35 millimeter standoffs, uh, Loctite, the 10 millimeter screws, and then we're going to run them through the top of the drone, and then thread the standoff, and then uh, same tightening technique, uh, grip the standoff with pliers or something, and then tighten with the screwdriver. Don't over tighten too, because it's just aluminum. And I usually keep these standoffs always adhered or fastened to this part of the frame. And then when I remove and install the ducts, uh, it, it goes on and off just like that. So repeat this step for the 11 remaining 20 millimeter standoffs. Okay, our standoff city is complete. <laughs> um, make sure to lock tight all of these ones and make sure they're all tightened. Just go ahead and double check all your screws. Um, next up, let's uh, get these rims situated. Okay, so the puffin, it's meant to be used either with or without ducks. I personally don't like flying with ducks, but some people love it, and that's why I'm selling these guys separately on the website for additional purchase. Uh, when you get your ducks in the mail, it's gonna be aggressively wrapped in tape because they're just made out of TPU. So once you've uh, released them from their confines, they're going to be all bent out of shape like this. They're already springing back, but um, you can stick them in an oven for uh, maybe like 15 minutes at the lowest temperature setting. So mine is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Or you can just use a heat gun or a hair dryer and that will return your ducts back to their circular shape. So, if you did buy some ducts and you want to install them, the way you do it is you press down, you find the two notches here, press down, and then turn it into a pretzel shape, and then slide it into the uh, rim here, and align the uh, one notch so that's directly centered above that screw, like that, and then hold down with your thumb and then slowly, carefully unravel the duct while keeping it aligned in the groove. And then that's how you do it. It's sort of like the inverse of a tire. So I repeat this with the other three rims and ducts before installing them. Now at this point, you should install your motors and your electronics and do all that stuff. Uh, in the kit is included some eight millimeter screws um, to mount your motors so that those can be stainless steel as well and not rust if you happen to fly over some salty sea spray. But uh, at this point I'm going to just show you how to install the ducts. It's pretty easy. Uh, you just line them up like that, plop, <laughs> and then use a, a six millimeter button head screw. And I do not use Loctite for these um, joints um, because I usually remove and take off the ducts or the rims, whether I want to use ducts or not. And so it's three screws that um, hold on each of the rims. But one thing I forgot to mention are the FPV camera mounts. Now these ones, um, they're kind of universal camera mounts. So depending on what type of camera you have, it's going to change the direction that you're going to orient these. So with a Caddx camera, it comes with a longer cable. Um, so you can face these outward 
but if you have the original camera and cable, it's shorter. It's only 100 millimeters instead of 110. So the way you orient it is uh, inward, like this, with the long, um, the long notch on the top of the drone, and then you can just slide that on there. And it's a good, it's a good tight fit. I try to do my best with the 3D printing tolerances. And uh, slides on like that. The DJI cam, make sure to check the arrow for the up orientation. And uh, so the two holes kind of line up in these notches and then the notches guide the two holes as you're changing the angle. So it's a little bit of a, I don't know, a weird slot technique for adjusting the, the angle of the camera. This is the DJI Cradle. Um, the way it works is the one with the front leg or span or bridge here is the first one to go down. Uh, I'm pretty sure I said the wrong thing just now. You want the first one to be installed without the bridge span thing and this is to provide more clearance for the battery cables and other wiring. And then you want the second one, the top one, which is actually at the bottom of the drone, um, you want this one to have the bridge on the top. The antennas are held in place by the TPU portions of this um, uh, standoff. Um, okay, so I have it upside down, actually. That's the way I'm supposed to do it. It's always confu confusing with an inverted design. But what you want to do is run these antennas through the bottom like that. See what I did there? It's kind of weird. Okay, and then this camera's stuck right there for now. Okay, and then work it in. Don't put it, push it in quite the way, all the way, um, because you got to get the other side, the other half on there. So work it on there, and uh, make sure it all squeezes together nicely. So now these rear standoffs are pressing against the antennas, preventing them from coming loose and losing signal, so your drone doesn't fall out of the sky because you lost video. Isn't that great? And then the antennas, I just leave them dangling like this. Now if you're ultra pro, um, <laughs> you can use these True RC left-hand polarized antennas in place of the original DJI air unit, and this might give you a little bit of extra range when it's installed. Here's what it looks like with a uh, Cadex uh, camera. You flip the TPU things around and um, it gives you an extra bit of uh, clearance since these cameras have such a wide field of view it will be less likely that you'll see ducks in view. Okay, so when you have all your junk on the inside uh, putting on the bottom plate um, is pretty straightforward. Uh, it just uses these six millimeter button head screws and I, I do not use Loctite because I take the bottom plate on and off all the time. and. Uh, one thing to note is for the uh, camera end of the drone, this TPU camera mount is actually 36 millimeters, so it's a little bit longer than the 35 millimeter standoffs. What this means is that when I tighten down, it compresses the TPU, which uh, adds a little bit of extra damping and makes the camera just a little bit more solid, so there's less likely to get jello. This is an idea that I got from Freezillion with his X8 Cinelifter frame. I don't own one, but I heard from someone else that this is something that he did, so I decided to try it out as well. Okay, get all eight screws into your bottom plate here, and uh, let's throw on the ducks here and see what that looks like. And blammo, here we are. I took off the ducks because I am a no-duct kind of guy, unless I want to fly really close to someone and I need that extra bit of protection plus the ducks help slow things down a bit so you can get really close to objects without touching them. Anywho, congratulations, you finished your puffin frame.